All right, lads, welcome back. Tarts Foreign for the New Order as the Greater Germanic Realm. Last episode, we um, have all, well, we almost concluded our negotiations with Sweden. We're going to do that this episode. We um, really managed to squeeze them. I couldn't believe we squeezed them as hard as we did. Uh, we, we took two concessions at the start, uh, pushed on one thing, and then we basically pushed on everything else, everything military. And they agreed. Now we're about to be off to Stockholm to talk with the king. So, uh, result. Off we go. Now. The letter. Borman stared incredulously on the manila envelope. The rich quality paper had its smooth texture broken only by the delicately curling letters reading Der Leader. But he had seen plenty of former letters over the past 20 odd years. What really threw him off balance. Oh, excuse me. It was the uh, wax seal on the back of the envelope. Two lines holding a crown shield adorned with more lines and crowns. It's the royal se one of the small gaggle of secretaries who had brought the letter to his office began to say, but Borman caught him off with a hand movement. I know what it is. Uh, I saw this back when I was the old leader's assistant before the war. But why the... I mean, what reason could the Swedish royals have for writing me? Even when the leader nominated me successor, I only got a curt congratulatory call from that limp-wristed loser they call a prime minister. I haven't seen them since the leader's funeral, yeah, since the leader's funeral, and, there, and the realm chancellor he hasn't gotten a letter directly from Stockholm Palace since the invasion, uh, since the <laughs> invasion, since the invitation to the coronation in 1950. Maybe you should open it, my leader. Of course I'm going to open it, you mouth-breathing Bavarian turd peddler. Siegfried, have that man demoted for making idiotic remarks, uh, remarks about his leader. And make sure he know uh, he knows he's lucky he doesn't get worse. Hugh, with the glasses, letter opener, now. One of the other four secretaries stepped forward, tr uh, lightly trembling, and gave the leader the letter knife that had been lying on his desk in front of him. With a swift movement, um, Borman opened the wax seal and glared angrily at the secretary until he retreated several steps back. The leader let his eyes scan the single page. Seems the Swedes uh, want to join the pact. Cowards aren't they even? Uh, cowards aren't even going to put up a fight like their neighbors. Maybe that makes them smart. Oh well, one of you prepare a response praising them for their wisdom and stating I will make a state visit as soon as possible. Making sure, uh, make sure to make it clear I want ARPO officers on the ground helping with security. I don't want some Norwegian balshi getting any ideas. Oh, and inform Gerda that she can buy some furniture if she comes along. Might put her in a better mood. Now, I don't know what Gerda he's talking about because his wife has been dead since the 50s. But maybe Gerda is just some someone that he's sleeping with. Anyway, off to Stockholm. Now, research. Flexible automation techniques. Ah, I'd really not have to go through uh, the host Italian diplomats thing right now. Hmm. Thing is, there's only, there's only oh, more events no matter where I go. I think I might do the American thing, actually. Maybe the Japanese thing. No, we'll, we'll continue with the Italians. They're uh, my main priority. They're on the continent with us. They have a hell of an army. Uh, they have an air force. Yeah, their army's bigger than ours. Um, well, their own personal army. The, the army of their nation. Total, do we probably have more men than they do. Yeah, we definitely have more men than they do. And our faction has a hell of a lot more men than they do. Uh, anyway. Now... So you should have lowered, lowered that order of battle. You should, yes, you have 63,000 men now. That's not bad at all. Well, it's still pretty terrible, but, you know, for you, it's not bad. Now, launch fall Rolo. It'll be almost instantaneous. The time has come. Let us sail forwards and fulfill our part in the deal with France so that we can finally reestablish our hegemony in Western Europe. We'll declare conflict with Brittany, as will France. Off we go. Now. You face what? How many men? Yeah, between 7,290 and 8,700. Uh, go f uh, did I draw you a battle plan? Why don't you... What? Oh, you're still over here. Why are you over there? Anyway. Uh, yes, off everyone goes. Be swift. Ah, meet with Italian diplomats. We will host a meeting between ourselves and the Italians. As the Romans used to say, uh, verba valong scripta manong. I, pro I probably have to pronounce those words probably properly, but I don't really know Latin. Uh, well, I know a decent bit. Uh, while declarations of intent are a good start, in the end they are just that, words and nothing more. If we want to actually make some progress, we need a written agreement explicitly stating that progress is being made. In order to address this issue in the most direct way, Martin uh, Borman shall invite an Italian diplomatic uh, delegation to Germania, where they will discuss the situation in detail and find a possible accommodation. 
Of course, the Italians would accept. Uh, who would be so uh, foolish as to refuse our great elite, our leader's offered hand? Now that I think about it, though, the Italians might do just that. Oh, please, who will hear them if they really have the gall? Now. Oh. Well, that's that for Brittany. France now has a GDP of 34 billion. Even this France, even this massively reduced France, has a GDP of what? Uh, yeah. Two, two billion, yeah, two billion plus more than Iberia, which is just sad. That is just sad. Hmm. I'm considering doing something once we have the uh, kind of whole kind of game over with. I'm kind of considering dividing up Africa, like giving Iberia a bunch of their like their old colonies of Angola and Mozambique down here. Kind of expanding our colonies, giving France West Africa, like just having the French state annex the Gaul. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do with Algeria. The, the Italians did win it, so, hmm, you know. Now, Carton House. More excise taxes. Political power? No problem. We do special missions anywhere? There's a, there's a really odd lack of uh, missions. You can't do anything new. Anything exciting. Alright. Substantial, substantial. Complete, complete, substantial, complete. And soon enough, everything will be fine. Everything will be complete. Well, wow, which one's first? A cordial invitation. Now, we are going to be swapping around our two armies. Um, yes, you can come all the way over here. That's perfect. You can get on the border here with Burgundy. And you can get on here, uh, on the border also with Burgundy, but on our side. Now. Uh, yes. Behind his ornate mahogany desk, Martin Bormann, leader of the German people, faced a dilemma. In front of him was a blank sheet with the uh, Realms Adler header mar uh, marked it as an official missive from the uh, Realms Kanzlite to the Italian Empire. He had tried to convince his secretary to handle the issue as usual. Try from Brittany. Okay, fantastic. So many events. Now. Um, to handle the issue as usual, or more precisely, to write all the niceties those haughty bastards seem, uh, seem to like so much. But his aide had been adamant for such a momentous circumstance. A handwritten letter from the leader was the best choice. For a moment he was tempted to simply give up, but he would have lost face with, with his own government and the entire world. Nonetheless, making the first step still felt like a humiliation for the proud Borman, whilst politics and intrigue were his mother tongue. Oh god, oh yeah, this is where our agents get captured in Burgundy. Now... Uh, he had never been one for international diplomacy. The realm was destined to rule over the world. Why bother with petty squabbles and traitorous partners? Still, after the civil conflict, there was little left of that realm which had brought him back to his current predicament. Sighing, he steeled his resolve. He had to do this. His mind made. Uh, he sat reflecting upon what to write. The Italians were adept. So many. Now we'll have to go over to the American tree, because, uh, uh, alright, got, you know what, I'm going to quickly just roll forward one day, so I don't have to keep looking out of the corner of my eye, oh, there we are, alright, where was I? Uh, the Italians were adept diplomats. Even he had to admit that keeping together an alliance of nations that were at each other's throats most of the time for almost 15 years was quite the feat, and they clearly still held it against the Germans for Atlantropa, which meant he had to be cautious not to fail even before beginning. As he pondered, an idea struck his mind when the Axis was still an actual alliance. He had studied a bit of Italian, if only to make a good impression on the dignitaries that regularly visited Germania when it was still called Berlin. Perhaps he could use this to endear his potential inter interlocutors to him. Yes, that was the solution or at least a star still better than nothing he bathed the nib in the inkwell and began uh, Narita Merde no that's not it Cara Amici or Cari Amici rather perfect go talk to Italy 
now, which is uh, Dinner with the King, is it not? It is. <laughs> dinner with the King, Dinner with Rome. I'm also going to roll forward one day. Now, oh, there we are. Dinner with the King, the assaulting smell and taste of the sore strumming almost made Borman wretch, but he did his absolute best keeping his in and keeping his eyes locked with the Swedish king sitting across from him. He couldn't show weakness in front of all the dignitaries and officials from both Sweden and the realm, especially as the Swedes had insisted a photographer be present at the dinner party. The monarch g gave the suffering leader a seeming look of genuine concern, but Borman noticed a sparkle of playful joy in his eye. Are you quite all right? Her leader, uh, maybe our cuisine is not to your liking. I can have the cooks prepare something else for you. Borman sold it with great effort and gave a pained smile. That will not be necessary, and it is my leader, your highness, your majesty, and not quite yet. Um, the king gave... Oh, I love that. The king gave another patronising smile as Borman suffered through another bite. That royal asshole, he was doing this on purpose. Fucking Bernard Dots Napoleon should have had them all shot. Borman forced another smile. I must say, I am delighted that Sweden has seen reason and wishes to join with the realm and its loyal allies in building peace and prosperity for all Europeans. I am looking forward to, to the signing ceremony later. Indeed, a remarkable, a remarkable change of policy, Leader Borman. I must say, over the past decades, I have heard hundreds, if not thousands, of stories of the peace and prosperity the realm has brought our Scandinavian neighbours since the courageous liberation of their lands from their governments. German justice, swift and effective, wielded with the efficiency and skill of NSDAP. Borman felt like he had been insulted but couldn't put a finger on it, so he simply gave another sheepish smile and forced another piece of sore strumming into his mouth. How much longer must this go on? Uh, which one is next? Triumph from Brittany. Good, something I'm actually excited to read. Fall Rollo has succeeded exactly as planned with no small amount of assistance from the Wehrmacht. French state's forces have managed to force the capitulation of the Republic of Brittany and their territory will now be annexed back into France proper. The tricolor flies from Marseille, uh, Marseille to Brest once again and the French now serve as a worthy counterweight to the unpredictable Burgundian menace. With so many German guns among, amongst the French uh, troops and so many German volunteers on the front lines, Fall Rollo cannot merely be called a victory for France. Uh, victory France, it is a victory for the realm too. Another corner of Europe has returned to the domination of a Germanic proxy, and our position in France is now immutable. The regime there would never act against us after such a success. It is a good day for all French and German alike. Maybe not for the Bretons though, no. Political power plus 50, uh, gain base stability plus 5%, and the party bureaucracy gains 10 power, and, four per and here gains 4% loyalty towards the Conservatives. Fantac uh, fantastic. Now, screams in the dark, yes. Perhaps Galen wasn't, uh, oh, excuse me, quite correct about the skill of uh, such his, of his men. Now, screams in the dark, your name. The blue and yellow mess that had once been a muscular German agent spat some blood at the questioning SS officer. The interrogator sneered and wiped, uh, and wiped off his uniform using the apron he was wearing. Disappointing, he said dismissively, Werner, give him some more cattle prod. Twenty minutes of screams later, uh, the interrogator asked again your name. Um, Oberschauer leader Schwanstaffel. How very droll, Werner, the tongs. After another 15 minutes, the agent was substantially more talkative. Uh, Eric, my name is Eric Witzelben from Nuremberg. Very good. And who do you work for, Herr Witzelben? The agent uh, hesitated, causing the interrogator to sigh. Werner, please fetch the knives. Wait, no, I'll talk, I'll talk. I'm working for the foreign branch of the, Or of the Orpo for a man named Muller. Please stop. The SS interrogator smiled quizzically, leaning against the wall of the dank cell. Very good, Herr Witzelben. That wouldn't be Heinrich Muller of the Gestapo, would it? That moron and traitor to the SS would be, would be the type to send agents into the Ordenstadt speaking French. I remember him very well, then I'm sure my superiors will allow me to send a message through you. Yep, you're releasing me, of course, Herr Witzelben. You and all your friends, Werner, proceed. Make sure to leave the teeth. Outside the building, nobody could hear the screams. The Ordnung's bullets eye will lose five power. Oh, dinner with Rome. Sitting at the head of the long and uh, ornate dinner table, Martin Borman allowed himself a moment of self-gratification. Everything was going according to plan. The Italian dele delegation, led by the new ambassador Gaston uh, Guidotti, uh, had symbolically passed through the Brennero border uh, post. And, of course, it's called the Brenner Pass, but now it's under Italian control, so it's called Brennero. Uh, I imagine so. And the leader had personally welcomed the minister in front of the realm's Kanzlei, showing only a tinge of envy for the for the for, uh, showing uh, showing only a tinge of envy for the beautiful uh, was that Blanchia Flami Flaminia. Of course, the Italian diplomats had been impeccable, bringing gifts worthy of a leader of his statue, a golden Rounds Adler shaped centerpiece for Borman's office from the Duce, and an ancient well, there is no Duce, and an ancient mini uh, miniated mini miniated copy of the. 
is that Nibelung Genel what the hell does that say? Nibelung Genelid Genelid Nibelung Genelid from Emperor Umberto II oh, he's Emperor now is he? Uh, well Italy is an empire obviously Martin Portman had given the Italians ample proof that he too could be a courteous host the marble corridor of the Rans Cantlay had been turned into an impromptu banquet hall where two, where the two delegations were now feasting with the finest foods from all of the pact. The drinks were courtesy of Umberto's own wine cellar and mingling with each other, the guest of honour at the leader's rice um, was the uh, Italian ambassador while his own foreign realms minister was sitting at his left. Drinking from a glass of fine Lambrusco, Borman decided it was time to know his opponent better. How do you find the roast ambassador, he asked, and what he hoped was good, if a bit guttural. Italian, wonderful as expected, leader, just as your mastery of our tongue. His uh, guest replied in perfect, unaccented German, bowing his head slightly in gratitude. However, it would please me immensely if we could, if we continued our conversation in German. It has been so long since the last time I practiced it. Borman mentally rolled his eyes, as expected from those damn diplomats, complimenting him, saving him from embarrassment, and subtly accusing him of having refused an ambassador until now. All in the same period. For some reason, this brief exchange felt to him like some sort of salute before a duel where your opponent gives you a moment of respite before going all in. Things are going to heat up very soon. Indeed, they are. Oh, seriously? Straight away? Wow. Now, final negotiations. Today marked the culmination of our ongoing efforts to facilitate Swedish entry into the Einheits Pact and the facilitation of friendship between our great country and their somewhat less great nation. While the Americans and Japanese might complain and whine, suggesting we strong-armed or somehow force the Swedes at this point, the solemnity and pomp of today's ceremony at Stockholm's Royal Palace um, should awe even the international press into silence. In the dozens of gilded halls of the palace, hundreds of dignitaries from all over Europe have been clinking crystal glasses with expensive uh, Riesling and eating Swedish delicacies. At the centre of it all has been the leader of the royal family and the Prime Minister of Sweden, the evening culminating in the signing of the Treaty of Stockholm marking the final integration of Europe's last truly independent Germanic state into the economic and military structures of the German uh, realm's mighty lines. The pact will rise again after the trouble of recent years, stronger than ever before. I wouldn't quite say that the, the... I wouldn't quite say we've integrated them into our economic and military structure. Certainly economic, maybe not military. The eagle and the lion uh, unite again. Yeah, Sweden is a pact observer, not a full member. Guarantee Sweden, an act on aggression pact with them will gain 200 political power, and Sweden gains pact observer, which will give them an extra 5% annual GDP growth factor. Good for them. As well as, uh, is that 10% based stability for us or them? Yeah, I'll quickly check. What do you want at the moment? You're on 100, same as myself, so neither of us will ever know. Either way, they're a pact observer now, which is good. This nation is one with close ties to Germany and its fellows in the Einheits Pact, and having been granted observer status within the organization while maintaining its independence from the pact, this nation is given the privilege of uh, participating in some Einheits Pact programs and activities, while in turn sharing some of the pact members' responsibilities and obligations. Good for you. Now, I'd rather not immediately go for Finland just so that I can uh, be spared the massive amount of events. Now, a lavish gathering. Leader Borman Ambassador uh, Guidotti said his tone unchanged from the light conversation they were having before. Our countries have a long history of friendship and brotherhood, but they have been separated as if by a dam. The Atlantropa Dam. Martin Borman, uh, it says Marin. Martin Borman vis uh, visibly tensed to surprise at the sudden shift in the conversation. Like the waters of the, okay, we'll read this first. Stockholm Treaty in a lavish ceremony, uh, in lavish ceremony and reception tonight at the Royal Palace in Stockholm, the Kingdom of Sweden affirmed its desire and plans to integrate itself into the German alliance and economic industrial sphere in Europe. Furious accusations of German coercion and imperialism have been levelled from Washington and Tokyo, but with even the notoriously um, uh, Natsok sceptical royal family. Are they? When, we invaded, when Germany invaded the Soviet Union in our own timeline, uh, is it Gustav? Wrote uh, Schickel Gruber a letter thanking him for doing so, but the letter was blocked by the Prime Minister. Now, uh, internal reactions have so far been muted as the ceremony itself, however, all were smiles and positive about the future of Sweden alongside that of, that of the realm. The leader, Martin Borman, was, however, a notable exception, seemingly pale and sick. A number of conspiracy theories have already spawned about a possible poisoning attempt by Swedish intelligence or the royal or the royals themselves. Uh, oh, God. Is Borman's cancer getting there? Uh, Adler und Lova uh, sind wieder eins. Perfect. 
Ah, oh, where was I? Like the waters of the Mara Nostrum, so did our relationship retreat until it was nothing but a salt wasteland just as the Adriatic Sea today. His tone, despite the smile, was serious. Now, do tell me, leader, who do you consider responsible for such a heinous crime against nature and man? The... What's this? That's West Africa. Whatever it is, it's taking up some lag. Yes, it is. Allied victory in West Africa. Well, that's good for us. In the sense that if the uh, Cameroonian African state won, then it'll be bad because they're left-ish. Well, see, you, you get a new leader. You get thrown out, and then another guy comes in, and then you split. Yeah. Anyway. Now, where was I? The time for niceties was over. Now the duel had begun in earnest. Out of the corner of his eye, Borman could see his foreign minister begging him with his eyes to make the right choice, and the silence that had fallen into the room told everyone told him that everyone had heard the question. Dozens of eyes were upon him, and he knew that the answer would either save the conference. I'm going to re uh, refrain from selecting a focus until we uh, click this. And he knew that the uh, would either save the conference or sentence it to a quick and painful death. Of course, the leader had his own idea that, that Atlantropa was a perfectly justified project and that the Italians had no right to complain, but he'd never say it. The ambassador wanted him to admit that the realm had wronged Italy. The easy way out was to lay the blame on his former rival, uh, Albert Speer. He had been the one to design it, and the ambassador would have surely accepted such an answer, but it's still equal to say that the Germans had been responsible. Bormann thought about the potential alternatives. Their relations between Italy and their former Iberian allies were abysmally low after the end of the triumvirate. Perhaps they'd uh, be happy hearing them insult their newest rivals. Also, there was the eternal trump card, since uh, bundle of sticksism and Nazism share many common tenets. Perhaps he could accuse the small hats and uh, the Swiss ones, and the Swiss ones especially of having tampered with the German economy. After a few seconds of reflection, Bormann answered the ambassador's question. Um, sadly, not all Germans wanted to have Italy as an ally. Lose 100 political power, party bureaucracy will lose 3 power. <laughs> we could always just blame it on the small hats, because of course we can. Oh, and there it is almost immediately. I believe we can immediately keep going. No, nope. I think I'll have to read this one first, which is I have no problem doing. Now, a successful meeting, and that is why... Ooh, tax hike. No, not yet. How much money are we getting? 63 billion. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. Now, and that is why Albert Speer is the man responsible for the disaster that struck the Mediterranean. With him gone, however, we can once more bring our great nations together for the betterment of all. Martin Borman ended his speech and looked expectantly at his guest. Internally, he was fuming. He had humiliated himself and the realm in front of everyone. The murmurs from his part of the delegation were proof enough, and Gidati be damned if he didn't appreciate his show of diplomacy. Indeed. Oh, God, there's so many. Uh, uh. Indeed, Leader Borman, it is, as you say, the diplomatic greed with a slight nod smiling. It is sad how all this destruction and suffering are the work of a single man. Still, now he can no longer harm anyone, and our two countries can finally start to let go of the past and forge a new future together. Yes, that was it. The leader smiled both inwardly and outwardly, knowing he had succeeded in his endeavour. This this would surely improve Germany's standing in the uh, consess. That's that be consensus of nations. And he would be able to use the success to reassure his people of his competence and dedication to peace and progress. This banquet uh, has been exquisite, Gidati added, interrupting his train of thoughts. Such a wonderful welcome, Sil. I believe that the time for car carousing is over. Let us discuss the details for the preliminary agreement. Then we shall feast again to our heart's content. Of course, Ambassador, the Foreign Minister, was quick to interject, ushering them to the leader's office. Borman was about to remind him that um, it was his office, but allowed the man his moment of triumph. By his side, the Italian diplomat was um, checking a thick envelope of papers brought to him by a young aide. His expression had changed, now looking like a hunter before beginning a safari. Despite all his previous optimism, he suddenly felt... A bit unsure for some reason, the leader suspected that by the end of the day, the ambassador would have found at least ten ways to convince him to declare conflict with the Italian Empire. I can already feel the headache brewing. Italo-German thaw! Fantastic! When the German realm and the Italian Empire had announced for the first time uh, after the disbandment of the Axis 20 years ago, their intention to hold diplomatic talks in Germania, no one had believed the former allies. Oh, excuse me. 
Um, and now bitter enemies to end their two decades long rivalry sparked by the Atlantropa disaster. This morning these people were proved wrong as leader Martin Borman and Gaston Guidati, the new Italian ambassador in Germania, have announced the signing of a preliminary agreement to demilitarize the Alpine border and allow trade between the two nations. While most experts observe that it will take much longer to let go of the past, this is indeed a momentous change for Europe as its two giants finally agree to coexist in peace. Everyone knows what the first alliance between Italy and Germany did for the world. Who knows what the second one will bring? Another gl a success for our glorious leader. So the world in about the next two years, um, maybe three, is going to experience, with the exception of kind of the oil crisis and anything that flares up in Africa, a good bit of peace. We've signed a deal with Sweden, with the Swedes. We've just signed a deal with the Italians. We'll, we're soon to sign a deal with the Finns. We'll um, have the Eurasian thaw between us and Japan. We'll have the, uh, the thaw between us and America. And America will have a thaw with Japan. So things shall be coming down nicely. Hmm. And we're currently on DEFCON 3. Yeah, that's not great. Zimbabwe and Botswana's war. I do believe that uh, Mugabe is getting his shit pushed in. Yes. Looming fiscal crisis. Ah, yes. It appears uh, Mugabe can just not just can't have it in either timeline. That is terrible. Wow. Anyway, I also made the uh, MPLA win in Africa. Don't know if I told you that. I think that was from a few episodes ago. Also, why can we not project power in the North Sea? We could do it at the start of the game, but now we can't do it. I hate that. Anyway. How are we doing? Very well. Our economy is better than both of them. Military isn't great, but who cares? Faction is the strongest by far. And we have the vic we have the victories. Perfect. Now. Des Auftauen. Perfect. Which one is next? Uh, the Transatlantic Thaw. The sun finally broke through the clouds, bathing the garden in its warm glow. Borman loosened his tie and slapped his loosened his tie and slapped his thigh. Uh, the bull uh, dog turned around with a growl. A stick lodged in its jaw and ran off into the bushes. Bring it back, Adolf. Bring it back. Borman chortled loudly. He's still learning, Balder. He's a tough bastard, like his namesake. Doesn't know when to let go. Borman bent to his knees and clapped his uh, hands together. Adolf emerged from the undergrowth and trotted over, panting heavily. As much as it brings me to say this, the time has come to thaw relations with the United States. After all, I had been planning a diplomatic trip before the leader passed away. And if I recall correctly, I had planned to join you, Balder von Chirac replied. He threw a stick far into the air, but the beagle sitting by his feet refused to budge. Go on, Carol, get it. Ah, never mind, he crossed his arms. My leader, I would like to help uh, organize the upcoming detente. My English is better than Walther's, and, and you have a natural affinity for your mother's country. Borman interjected with a smile, laughing as young Adolf jumped up to lick him, uh, though no warmth emanated from his uh, voice. Request denied, Walther will organize the upcoming conference. You have internal political matters to deal with. You know how self-obsessed the Americans are. If you get involved, they will make you the face of the detente. Carl suddenly snapped his head around and barked viciously at... Um, Adolf the bulldog yelped and cowered behind Borman's feet. Borman cursed and swung a kick at the beagle, which cried out in pain and ran off. Keep your fucking dog in check. Borman snapped furiously. Von Chirac's face turned to dark red, but he nodded in silence. Onwards with the detente. Perfect. Now, meh. Uh, let's bring that back under our control. There we are. And give me more money. Excise taxes are what now? Plus 26%. Lovely. Lovely. Now. It's December of 68. We should see the uh, Russian Unifiers uh, start to diplomatically um, unify. Bepatovism has a massive amount of men because he annexed the Euro League and he annexed Ornberg and he had his own men. Yeah, 456,000. The Slavs 244 to 254. Good God, you've got a lot of men. How many do you have? Yeah, Sablin should win there. What I saw in my test game was that Sablin pushed, then he got pushed back, and then he pushed and he won. And then they peacefully united. Which, it's a shame we couldn't have a full peaceful Russian unification, but to be fair, like, we've got a lot of Soviets here. We've got a West Russian Soviet Republic under Suslov. We've got Batov, a guy who doesn't mind unifying with, so with Soviets. We've got the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic, the Central Asian Federation, Socialist Republic of Turkmenistan, and of course Sablin. Now... Oh.
facing the night. The Sword Britain newspaper smacked down the mother's desk, disturbing the thin pillar of smoke from his full ashtray. He could not read the Breton headline, but it was helpfully translated in French underneath. Nantes, canot de mort, confirme réal. The headline was accompanied by a blurry black and white picture of police officers fishing a life raft containing whitish objects out of the Loire. Muller, currently smoking his fourth cigarette this hour, did not bother trying to make out the details in the picture. He already had high-quality uh, colour imagery from the Nantes Police Department splayed out across his desk. The half-dozen chemically washed skulls grinned back at him, one with an SS cap almost playfully um, splayed on top to drive the message home. He looked up at his colleague who had brought the paper. How bad, how bad is it, Reinhard? Galen sat down and motioned to Muller's pack of cigarettes. Muller uh, lit it for him while Galen was talking. Not too bad, all things considered. Thankfully, everything can be bought in Brittany, including silence. The free press only got their hands on the most bare-bones details. Uh, anyway, we've got confirmation from medical denial records match our team. I have contacted the Breton government and asked them to burn the skulls and send us the ashes. I have made arrangements for distributing, uh, distributing it to the families. Muller gave Galen his cigarette and picked uh, up his own back from the ashtray to inhale deeply for damped animals, and I thought we were hard in the Gestapo. The, the leader will have my hide when I tell him we have to pull the plug. I gave him my personal assurances. Galen gave a sly smile as he knocked some ash off his cigarette into the tray. Not necessarily, Heinrich. Gave me five million and a signature from recruiting for recruiting for military intelligence. I might have some old contacts I can draw on for a gamble. If you think it can work, I'm all ears. Political power minus 50. A new special mission will become available. Unlocks decision. Unternehmen Tapferkite. Looking forward to it. To infiltrate the Ordenstadt, known in intelligence parlance as Gefar Bruno, Reinhard Galen has pulled on his own old military intelligence contacts to coordinate a highly dangerous mission. In the middle of the night, an elite team of Falsham Jaeger veterans will deploy from a plane far above Sam range and perform an experimental American form of vertical insertion known as high altitude low opening jump halo, isn't it? Uh, swiftly landing in what Sigin suggests is the weakest area of SS Hauptmund, uh, Haupt, Hauptamt control, former Wallonia. Oh, excuse me. Uh, they will raid an SS communication center, retrieve high-value intel, and exfiltrate to the north, uh, through the coast northeast of Dunkirk, where they will activate a radar beacon and be picked up by submarine. All assets are standing by. This has succeeded in my test games, so let's hope it does the same. Hmm. Now, uh, Des Auftauen. It is done. After long and difficult talks, it is finally done. Our glorious leader, in a demonstration of his incredible diplomatic skills, has convinced the Italian delegation that his intentions are sincere and that friendship between our nations is the only way towards a prosperous future for both. Now it's time for the bureaucrats to finalise the details and the technicalities, and then our Minister for Foreign Affairs will meet with his Italian counterpart for the official signature. This is a great day for the realm. Tell me, would we have been able to do this if France was in our wasn't in our faction? Probably not. Huh. Anyway... Also, we'll gain 10 relations with Italy, or 20, and they'll gain 20 with us. And the party bureaucracy will, give, will gain 10 power and 2% loyalty towards the Conservatives. I think Italy did things during the French Great Game where they made us look bad. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, we did it as well. Exposed race war and uh, suggested French death toll research, yeah. So, unfortunately, things are getting better, of course. But uh, they will likely not be positive, ever. Now, we should be finished. Complete. Complete, 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 complete. Fantastic. The Aus Grenzungs program is 50.3% complete, and the Bryce Brabant is 35.9% complete. Now, is this actually. I'm going to keep doing these decisions just because I can. Nice. Also, um, Realms Protectorate Prince Jugendland is the only puppet we have that is a, a Realms land, like in a game of Spear that you can choose to do, which is interesting. Hmm. Anyway. Um, yes. Peace in our time. Replace relaxed uh, Italian trade restrictions with peace in our time. Effective change. Daily political power gain plus 0.10. Resource speed plus 2%. The here will lose 10 power. The Kriegsmarine will lose 10 power. And we will enact a non-aggression pact with the Italian Empire. I'm just going to quickly check the recording. Make sure all is well. Indeed it is. Fantastic. 
Finally, with the Treaty of Mutual Understanding and Recognition signed out by, by uh, both parties, this long journey comes to an end. The realm and the Italian Empire have agreed to allow almost unrestricted trade between their shared borders and to a limited demilitarization of the Alpine Redoubts. While it will take time to let the scars of the last two decades of hostility and, rec and recrimination fade, this is already, already a resounding success. Slowly but steadily, our countries will, will learn once again that we used to be sworn brothers rather than bitter enemies. And everything will fall into place once again. Who knows, perhaps this is the beginning of a new Rome-Berlin access. And I did not keep an eye on Iberia. Oh, thank God, you've got, you've got another way to go yet. I thought you had to do this yet. Now. Okay, you can only do one of them. That's fine, that's fine. It was me sweating. Yeah, you're fine. All right, now let's read that American that thing that I did. We got to read from from uh, America. Uh, what should I do now? I've got quite a few events here where I don't have to read anything, so I'm going to keep or quite a few focuses rather where I don't have to read anything. So I'm going to click this, um, start to finish negotiations, and um, keep going. Now, tax hike? No. How is the construction going? Don't forget that. There you are. I'll have to do it again, but whatever. It's going very well. Fantastic. I wish I could build in all of these, these countries. Shame. Now, a smile for the cameras. Uh, wait, I need to read the other one first. Lifting the curtain. When a good German citizen thinks of the American people, they think of a untouchable liberal population as enslaved as much by their own... Oh, excuse me. Uh, by their own delusions of greatness as they are by their love of small hats and reds. However, despite their innumerable shortcomings in almost every aspect, we share two things with the Americans. A desire not to let nuclear war ravage the planet and a hatred for the uh, untouchable empire of Japan. It is because of these common causes that our wise leader has decided to lessen the divide between the realm and America. Foolish men may see this as a sign of weakness, but we know it is instead a, but we know it instead as proof of Natsakism's inherent superiority. The Americans, uh, seeing the strength that we hold, will take their place below us of their own volition. They only need a few pushes in order to do so. Gets them in the transatlantic thaw, yes. Again, YouTube, I don't agree with any of this. I'm just reading it. Smile for the cameras. Gets fed the interview. Isn't that a movie? Isn't that? It's like James Franco and Kim Jong-un. Yeah. Uh, the American media... Or is that the one with Eminem? Never mind. Uh, the American media is not kind to our leader. After all, if they were to show a truthful portrayal of the greater German realm, the dull American citizenry would be clambering to immigrate to it. As such, the Americans portray Bormann as a monster, as they did Schickel Gruber before him. Before the Americans will accept any uh, sort of deal with our... What's this about? Ah, yes. Um, that's, that's the thing where we have to sabotage the uh, Russians. Um... Uh, before the Americans will accept any sort of deal with our nation, we need to show them that the leader is not the inhumane murderer that they have been brainwashed into believing he is. We have arranged an interview between the leader and an American journalist. We have, of course, set a few limits for what can and cannot be asked in this interview. This is not a means of deception, however, but a means of making sure that the American people cannot, get, or <laughs> that they can, get a true and thorough view of the leader's character. Now, diplomacy in the wasteland. I'm going to leave this up for you. I don't think I'm going to read it. But uh, we get a special mission to sabotage the uh, unification talks between um, well, both of them, actually. If, if there was um, two of them doing it, but there's only one. And that's the West Russians and the uh, Ural Military District. How hard could it, could it possibly be? Just I'll leave that uh, for your own personal reading. Now. We take over the Russia, we see, yes. Unternehmen and Vertrauen. As soon as we have this uh, mission done in 32 days, we'll start doing that one. So, uh, I actually kind of would like to see them unify. Eh, maybe not. Now, I want like, I want to see it like, uh, removed from the fact that I'm playing Germany. Where, and obviously Germany would like to see conflict here. I, I would just kind of like to see them unify because I like seeing that kind of stuff. Now, onwards. As far as I'm aware, the uh, uh, Finnish negotiations are a mite trickier than the Swedish ones. I remember having done extensive um, playtesting, which I'm also going to do before I start the Finnish negotiations, so it actually might be better to not do them this episode. And instead do it off camera and see how it goes. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Now...
In that case, it might be a good idea to actually start on this tree so, so that we can, again, kind of keep these, like, four focuses for doing the finished and uh, negotiations. It might be a good idea. Yeah, I like that idea, actually. Now, the interview. Oh, our, our relations are positive. Fantastic. Though someone will eventually cancel the non-aggression pact, which sucks. Uh, what's this? Yes, that's the finished negotiations. That's fine. The interview. Richard Dudman adjusted his bow tie nervously. The in this interview would either propel his career into the stars or send it spiraling into the dirt. Fortunately for him, the Nat Sockers had provided a comprehensive list of topics to avoid. Iberia maintains the Iberian Council. Good for them. But isn't, like, both of these things, like... Like, where's the old decision for abolishing the Iberian Council? Because this is called, called for, the, yeah, where, where, where they're strongly reformist. And this is, yeah. I just don't get it. Huh. Or is, like, there used to be a, an abolished council thing. Anyway, never mind that. And where was I? Da, 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 da. Of topics to avoid. Oh, how grateful he was for those bastards and their documents. He couldn't wait to engage in a whole hour of fucking uh, Nat Saka's propaganda. What were the alternatives? Say something out of line and end the interview in an instant. Perhaps even damage the US-German detente before it had begun properly. His journalistic thirst had forced him to accept the interview, a decision he had quickly grown to regret. Hale Borman came, a voice Dudman shot to his feet as the saluting midget approached. <laughs> Uh, the man was squat and burly with a plain round face. This was the leader. He looked like a butcher who had suffered a midlife crisis and joined the Boy Scouts. Dudman uh, raised his own arm in response. Uh, hi, uh, Hail Dudman, he responded. <laughs> Hail Dudman. Borman's eyes flickered to his adjutants. Amusement, anger, a chill ran down his spine. This was no local butcher. He had to remind himself this was the butcher of Europe. The leader sat uh, down opposite him, joined by a, a bespectacled translator. Thank you for agreeing to this interview, Mr. Borman. What do you think uh, to achieve in your upcoming... Or what do you hope to achieve in your upcoming conference in Stockholm? Uh, 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 leader Borman. Borman's translator corrected with a false smile. Well, Mr. Dudman, I wish to improve Germanic-American relations. The time has come for the ice of thought. The upcoming conference is a gesture of my diplomatic goodwill. So, uh, leader Borman Dudman trailed off. The uniformed Nat Sockers around the room were staring at the journalist with polite smiles and burning eyes. A pang of inspiration hit him. Those, uh, these Nat Sockers bastards could control the interview, but they couldn't control how the American public perceived it. Dudman grinned another hardball for, for you, leader Borman. Do you have a pet? What about your favourite colour? Ah, yes. Political purpose 10. Ah, France is looking nice. What are you at? 35 billion GDP. Have you courted Scotland yet? No. Why not? I think something has gone wrong here. Yes, before you had Scottish resistance, you had Scottish terrorism. It says here that Scotland was not brought into the Union through exactly peaceful circumstances. It was about as peaceful as it could have been. I don't quite understand. Oh, you've actually got most of... Well, well, I see you've got most of the original tree done, yeah. You have been re-elected, so you have the massive new uh, second tree. God, it is big. Now. A bond forged in atomic fire. Gets vent Erinor Rungspur. It seemed impossible. In many ways, the countries were born of the same ash, rising as the phoenix from the dust left by the European powers of Britain, France, and Russia. Yet Germany snuggled deep into Central Europe, struggled to repel the Japanese invasion in the oceanic theatre of the First World Conflict. Only three decades later, the former enemies would be fighting side by side in a war of revenge against the powers that wronged them. Those brave enough to call the leader a uh, fool for supporting Japan in their, decade, in their righteous struggle against American decadence was quickly silenced by the blast of an atomic bomb when Japan needed her most. Germany answered, indeed. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And Wallace has been re-elected. He got impeached in my test game. I was hoping he wouldn't, but he did. Now... 
Erin are wrong, Spur. Leader Martin Borman sat down at his desk and stared at the map in front of him, a familiar sight, given his status as right for ruler of the world. It was an old map from before the Germanic race had asserted its global uh, supremacy. Pins and holes marked where the magnificent legions of the Axis had crushed their enemies so many times, so many sights of triumph over the Reds and Small Hats. The gears and Bormans had turned, and an old map turned into old memories, filling his mind. Beginning, uh, beginnings of their alliance to conquer the world, a time of squalor and degeneracy, then yet a time of promise. First, it was the Italians who joined the Axis, then the Japanese. Different races, of course, but they had a common enemy of the Reds. Ah, oh, the West African Federation. Which isn't an actual thing, but it is an uh, economic sphere, I believe. It's Wolofia's economic sphere, for some reason. Why Wolofia? I have no idea. Um, where was I? At least they knew who the real threat was. While the realm uh, triumphed over its enemies... Uh, Oh, how uh, his heart filled with joy when he remembered the subjugation of Europe. The Japanese fought their own enemies, crushing the Reds in China and asserting their own supremacy in the Asian continent. His eye returned to the world for to the real world for a momentary painful second before finding a hole within the Pacific on the small island of Iwo Jima. Even those Asians could have their triumphs he, uh, triumphs, he supposed. Reports spoke of how the sea filled with blood and iron, a graveyard spanning the waves and the complete rout of the Americans. So, in this world... Um... Basically, America had turned the tide in the Pacific against Japan, and they'd gotten as far as Iwo Jima. Um, where is he? I want to say this one's Iwo Jima. That's Iwo Jima. Okay, maybe that that's not Iwo Jima. That's Taiwan. That's Okinawa. I believe that's Okinawa, yes? Yeah, it's Okinawa. Uh, which one is Iwo Jima? Is that one Iwo Jima? No. Let's just look it up. Ah. Is it not here? That's unfortunate. I think that one's Iwo Jima. Pretty sure it's that one. Anyway, um, America reached Iwo Jima, but obviously, like it said here, they were beaten back badly. And then... Um, we, uh, what was it? It was like a German plane, a German strategic bomber on a Japanese carrier took off with the A-bomb and bombed Pearl Harbor. Anyway. <coughs> uh, it was not, not long after that the ultimate weapon of the realm, the product of the world's greatest minds, was detonated in Pearl Harbor and the war came to a close. When the conflict ended, the world belonged to the Axis. There were no more Reds to conquer and so on. Triumph came room to the Axis. No more unifying enemy and no more reason to cooperate. The Axis lasted about as long as the conflict, but the realm endured longer, and a child forever memory lane cut up to the modern day, and Borman was deposited in the real world where Japan was no longer an ally. The pain of friends turned enemies. Now, broken in an instant, gets about a statue for a thousand years. Things have changed since then, however, no longer do the Japanese and German empires start hand in hand in their respective place in the sun. No, the Oriental understands one language. Treachery, it is ingrained in the mind of the Asian from birth till the time it arrives to teach the next generation the same. Most tragedies in history are hard to pinpoint the exact cause of. There is no nuance in uh, the case of the attempted assassination of Adolf Schickelgruber. The leader was shot by the Japanese due to his strong genetics. The leader... Um ah, nice, we did it. Uh, due to his strong genetics, the leader denied the death sentence the Japanese had made for him. The fact is plain for all to see and should not be sidestepped or hidden um, uh, behind fancy politicking. Despite the insistence of the foreign minister, leader Borman does not fear the rising sun. Again, YouTube, I don't agree with any of this. I'm just reading it. Now, Untername and Tapferkite. Um, what the hell does that say? Air flogs. Bericht. Uh, transmission to... Ah. Heimflieger Verbande. Uh, Albrecht, stop Germania, stop club president, eyes only, full stop. Oh, excuse me. Yacht has retrieved tourists, stop many stories to tell, stop many photos for next club meeting, stop many interesting songs on local radio, full stop. We'll proceed to Kiel Harbour for lunch meeting tomorrow, full stop. Adler out. That crazy bastard Galen actually did it. Political power plus 100, Ordnung's Pulitzer gains 10 power. Good for them. I will choose carefully. What is your stability, by the way? Exemplary. Good. We have two things. Why is that two? Yes. Unternehmen Vertrau in Russia. Unfortunately, the Burger Creek drove our necessary attention from the affairs of Conflict Lord Russia, where Ivans used their time to eliminate their Conflict Lord competitors and organize themselves into several powerful states, threatening to unite and unleash their hordes against the Vaterland once again. As long as we still entertain our influence in Siberia. What influence is that? 
We must prevent the Russian states from peaceful unification. Through sabotaging their negotiations, uh, sowing distrust between them and turning warlords against each other, we can ensure that even if Russia re uh, reunites again, it will be torn apart by its internal struggles. 77% chance of the operation succeeding. Also, something I learned that was very interesting, he's not here at the moment, um, but in our own timeline, Mikhail Makovsky was a spy for the Soviets in the RFP. And it's slightly referenced in one of the events, where if Makovsky defeats... Um, uh, Yagoda, he burned some secret documents in uh, Irkutsk to prevent it from being found out. So I thought that that was very interesting, that Makovsky had been a spy all along for the Soviets. I know that there was rumours that Martin Bormann was a spy for the Soviets, but that was false. Now... Onwards. Yeah, Makovsky was a spy for the Soviets. Oh, why is there so many events? Now, statue for a thousand years. It was a fine sunny day in the capital of the world. Birds were flying high and roads bustled with citizens around the freshly coronated Schickelgruber Platz near the centre by the central statue. Currently covered by a canvas was the leader standing proudly, a hidden smile performing on his face. Beneath this curtain, he said, his smiles uh, stealth disappearing is a portrait of the greatest man the world has ever known, a hero of the Germanic race and the slayer of the small hat red menace that had once ruled this world, now under the German heel. He waited for the crowd's applause, a man whose legacy will last a thousand or two thousand years, three, an eternal legacy for an immortal man, a legacy that sadly had to outlive him. This man, he purposefully um, had a break. And his voice was taken from us, taken from us by that Asiatic menace, those Japanese hordes that, that, that uh, lie across the ocean. Their sly assassin, that monster of the Kenpatai, his bullets, unfortunately struck this magnificent man and sent him in a downward, downward spiral of health. Ah, where was I? Uh, we know now that, he, uh, he, uh, that we would still have the saviour of the Germanic race were it not for the betrayal of the Nipponese. Rest assured, uh, German folks, justice shall be done one day. Our soldiers will one day enact justice and Japan will pay one day. For now let the Emperor and those islands see this monument of gold and weep. Borman reached over and tried to yank off the canvas, tried, his arm failed him and he had a, and he felt a sudden jolt of pain and no strength to rip off the curtain. A nearby uh, bodyguard noticed and quickly helped to rip off the canvas. Nobody would notice for the statue truly was magnificent. Standing at the height of two men, a pure solid gold, Adolf Schickelgruber holding a great sword. An immortal man indeed. Good. Now, oh. Eastern Savages, gets about death and dishonor, intelligentsia and militarist loyalty plus one percent. Uh, the Germanic has, riven, has risen triumphant. As was clear from the establishment of civilization, no people can even begin to rival what the Germanic people have accomplished. The flourishing culture and unbreakable will of the Germanic people should have been enough to sweep over Europe. But what is a Germanic? Is there another conflict? Who's fighting who now? Ah, yes, you've exploded and the new guy is here. He's gone from pan -Af Africanism to revolutionary nationalism. Borman stood at the podium. It was in a smaller square than what he would usually make uh, such an, an important announcement at, but it would be terrible optics to announce the reversal of a Schickelgruber policy in a square named after him. And while all the big squares were named after Schickelgruber, he leaned into the microphone and began the redefinition of the racial hierarchy of all humanity. In German uh, Volks, he began, I have grave news far from the fatherland. Across those mongrels in the Russian waste lie the Empire of Japan. These people were once, I am ashamed to say, friends of the German nation. Indeed, we stood side by side destroying the Reds, the small hats in America, and all else who stood in our way. The world was divided between our two great empires. Indeed, such was, the, the, was their friendship that we even allowed them the status of honorary um, Germanic ship to be allowed to stand with us in the German nation. Bourne's voice took a darker turn at this moment, releasing with uh, it the anger of him of Germany, but they betrayed us. They broke our lines, proving that they were puppets of the small hat reds like the rest of them. Indeed, the status of their race was built on a lie that they were allies to the Germanic race. Such treachery should have severe repercussions. As of this day, the honorary Germanic ship of the Japanese uh, race has been retroactively revoked. It has been entirely... Uh, it oh, nice. Krakow, Krakow to Minsk. Fantastic. Uh, Litovsk Brest, uh, Slonim, Baron involved, 
Koidanov and Minsk get set to level 10. Fantastic. And our GDP growth will increase by 0.10%. Lots of that now. Ooh, 9%. Tax hike. 8.8%. Uh, where was I? Um, such treachery should have... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it has been entirely built on a lie and was a mistake. The Japanese are as low as any Slav, no any small hat. They are an enemy of the Germanic race and any opponent of humanity's purity. It is the response of the German Volk to fight against this menace for the sake of our children. A race alone, plus 10 political power. Um, Japan gets event water off ducks back. Again, YouTube, I don't believe in any of this. Okay, I'm just reading it. Chill. Now, something they can never understand gets... I'm not even going to say that one. I'm already taking too many chances with this side of the focus tree. Now, the Japanese did not carve out their empire by, by mastering the art of speech or pragmatism. There was no Bismarck of the East, no great leader who could guide the nation to glory. While Germans overpowered the Anglo-French diplomats in Munich over the issue of the Czechs, the Japanese began to indiscriminately blunder the earth, devoid of honor or understanding of the rules of conflict. Military powers burned brightly but briefly. The run would last a thousand years by the simple virtue of the unmatched German understanding of diplomacy. The leader's closest advisors have prepared options for... Uh... Uh, options for handling the, e e the Easterns. It is now a matter of carrot or stick. The choice is in the leader's hands alone. Indeed it is. Now. Let's do this. North Sea investigation in the cold, deep waters of the North Sea lies a treasure, yet it is not the same treasure sought by sailors in days of old. The treasure here is a much more recent discovery. Oil, we know the crude bounty lies beneath the waves, but such an untapped source must be prospected. With any luck, a thorough prospecting expedition in the North Sea will yield new sources of petroleum for the realm. Right, we'll spend 10 million, that seems a bit low. Get to reports from the North Sea. Not instantly, I hope. God damn it. Now... Walter Hevel strolled into the cabinet room with his usual polite smile. He sat down swiftly, shuffled his documents, and took a deep gulp from the glass of water awaiting him. Apologies for being late, my leader. Hevel thumbed through the thumped through the documents and slid two sheets of paper towards the end of the table. Borman took a long drag of a cigarette as he plucked them up with his free hand. I have compiled a summary of our two most realistic courses of action regarding Japan. The safest option would be a mild detente, allowing us to ease tensions and open up diplomatic relations. Alternatively, we could undertake a more confrontational approach, treat them as a threat on the world stage, try to turn turn any potential allies away from them. It's about time we had a concrete approach to Japan. Borman responded to the various realms ministers. Seated around the table nodded in agreement. Um, they are cunning but ultimately cowardly. Roaches tend to scurry when you turn your gaze towards them. The cabinet roared with laughter. Opening relations with Japan would benefit the realm. Balder von Chirac interjected pompously. We mustn't rattle our sabres at a nuclear superpower. My ministry has spent countless hours formulating a confrontational approach. He will snap he had grown weary of the aristocrat's pretension. It's called tough diplomacy. Balder von Chirac adjusted his immaculate uniform with an annoyed face. Borman scrunched his face up in deep thought. His smoking cigarette on the verge of slipping from his fingers. I support a detente with Japan. Did we do? Political power minus 100, base stability plus 5%. Oh, Finally, a longer, uh, uh, what should we call it, focus. Now, reports from the North Sea. Martin Borman thumbed through the documents with interest, his enthusiasm growing with every flick of a page. According to isolated, uh, what was this? Oh, he failed to beat the Russians, that's fine. Ordnung's Politei loses three power. Martin Borman thumbed through the documents with interest, his enthusiasm growing with every flick of a page. According to isolated reports, oil had been discovered in the North Sea. The, Fuhrer, uh, the leader shook his head in disbelief and leaned back in his chair. Surely not was such untapped potential for economic growth hiding away between the British Isles and Northern Europe. Optimism without reason was pointless. Borman grabbed a pen and began to scribble. Clandestine investigations would be launched immediately to determine the validity of these reports. Naturally, he expected to have his doubts confirmed. Yet, if investigations yield a discovery, let us wait and see. Again, the whole Iberia thing is really puzzling me. Huh. Oh. Uh, yes, that's all good. The Art of Diplomacy gets them into meeting in Tokyo. Uh, German-Japanese tensions will decrease by 10% for a total of a total tension of 32%. The party bureaucracy will gain 2% loyalty towards the um, reformists. The people will gain 2% loyalty towards the uh, people. Or the, not the people will gain 2% loyalty towards the reformists. And the militarists will lose 3% loyalty from the here and Kriegsmarine. And the intelligentsia will gain 5 power. Uh, 
Every time I see Saraland, I think Saraland. Now, it would be simple to turn to anger to allow blind rage to consume the consume the German people for the attempted assassination of leader of, of leader <laughs> of leader Schickel Gruber, orchestrated by the Japanese. Doing so would also be more than naive. It would be foolish, downright stupid to allow an opportunity to pass. German boots will not land on the shores of Tokyo, but uh, German currency may still rain from the skies above the financial centers of Japan. With the Americans on one front and the corrupt businesses on the other, the Japanese government is surrounded on all sides. Extending the olive branch may just be the perfect guys for taking the empire down from the inside. Fantastic. Fantastic. But all right, lads. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. Next episode, uh, I'll have um, done some playtesting with the Finnish negotiations to see how they go. Uh, just to see if we actually could get Finland as a full member of the pact. And um, we'll be continuing along the Japanese as well as American um, detente trees. See you then.